Imagine if this apple were to cost you $10 instead of 50 cents that cost today. This could happen if we don't take care of our bees. Bees pollinate many of the fruits, nuts and vegetables that we eat today. And that make it possible for us to have these foods at an available cost. But bees and beekeepers are in trouble. Beekeepers are losing over a third of their stock annually. And this is not news, but in 2006, there was a beekeeper, David Hackenberg, that made it public. He discovered that many of his 400 hives in his bee yard were empty. The adult bees had disappeared and he became a voice for beekeepers. The mystery of his disappearing bees caught the attention of the public, the media, the government. It also caught the attention of research centers, funding agents and scientists like myself. And then soon after, I was invited to work on a research team at the University of British Columbia with Dr. Leonard Foster. This was something new for me. I had mainly worked on health of humans before. This bees mm, wasn't sure, but I soon became quite fascinated by them. What they do, how they do it, why they do it, and why they are in trouble. And we work with other scientists and with beekeepers, like Liz Huxter in the photo. And Liz is passionate about bees. She's addicted to bees. <laughs> and the addiction is contagious. I got addicted to bees myself. <laughs> beekeepers, there are three types of them. Some that produce and sell honey, others that raise bees and queens to sell those queens to others, and others that raise bees to bring their hives for pollination. But why bees pollinate plants? Well, you know, plants and bees have a deal. I'll tell you about it. <laughs> what happens is that plants in their flowers have pollen, and the pollen have the sperm. In some plants, the sperm from one flower has to reach the female ovary from a different flower. The problem for plants is that they do not move. <laughs> so they need help to move that pollen from one male flower to a female flower. And the bees help. This is what happened with this deal. The plants allow bees to collect nectar and honey, and nectar and pollen, while bees help plants with sex. It's a good deal. Um, <laughs> this pollination starts the process that will produce the seeds and the fruits that we eat today. So this deal between plants and bees also benefits you and I. But sometimes there is not enough bees. And if there is not enough bees, one alternative is to pollinate by hand. So I tried this. Last summer, in the garden, we had some squash plants. And the female flowers were just not forming fruit, dropping, closing. So we took a cotton tip went to the male flower, got a little bit of pollen, went to the female flower and pollinated flowers. And voila, we had squash. And I really got to appreciate the work of bees because that took a lot of patience. So it is best to use the pollination power of bees. Bees, the main bee that is managed are honeybees because honeybees have a sheer number of them. Just one colony can have up to 50,000 bees. So if a beekeeper brings 100 colonies to an almond or blueberry field, he's bringing 5 million bees. That's a lot of power of sex. 
So bees are really important for the production of our food. However, we don't seem to fully appreciate the value of bees and the beekeeping industry. For example, here in Canada, there is only one federal scientist fully dedicated to honeybees, and he's one of 400 other scientists in other agricultural areas. We really need to pay more attention to bees and the beekeeping industry. But bees are not only important to produce and give us produce food and important for our nutrition and our diet. They are also important for our economy. In Canada alone, bees contribute over $2 billion to our economy. And if you add the US, in North America, the number adds up to $15 billion. That's quite a lot of money. But bees are in trouble. And one of our collaborators, Dr. Jeff Pettis, describes their problems best. He talks about three Ps. And to the three Ps, we added the Q. The Q is for queens, because there are a lot of challenge with queens. And queens are essential for a healthy colony. So the, having a healthy queen is essential for a healthy colony. The three Ps are poor nutrition, pathogens and parasites, and pesticides. Let's explore them. Bees need pollen as a source of protein, and they need a variety of it, just like us. But this is challenging sometimes when we plant crop after crop, field after field with just one crop. But there is hope. Now there is groups that give seeds to the farmers to plant around their crops, and these seeds are from bee-friendly flowers. So there is variety for them. And then bees have parasites and pathogens, just like us, have viruses, bacteria, fungi that makes them sick. However, the worst enemy of bees is a parasite, a mite called Varroa destructor. The name has a reason. This mite lands on the bee, drinks his hemolymph, that is like our blood, weakens the bees and transmit viruses that are fatal. But there is hope, because bees have natural defenses against these mites and against other diseases. So with cooperation, collaborations with beekeepers, other scientists as well, we are trying to identify, select and breed bees that have these natural defenses. These are very complex. But then we have to do more work to be sure that the bees we select, they also have the characteristics that the beekeepers value. For example, the ability to collect nectar and produce honey. So this is one of the beekeepers we collaborate, Liz. And as I told you, she really addicted to bees. And one of the reasons she and others are interested in working with us is because if we do find bees that are better able to manage diseases and pathogens, then we can reduce the amount of chemicals that we need to put in the hives to treat against these parasites. So we reduce the use of pesticides in the hive, the in-hive pesticides. And beekeepers really want to get away from the use of chemicals. But some beekeepers are also concerned about the pesticides that we use in the agricultural industry and that may be exposing with bees. The issue of pesticides is very complex. The large-scale use of agricultural chemicals started after World War II, and that was very positive. Increased the production and the yield of food worldwide quite significantly, and it's also responsible for us to have a lot of food available today. But we are reaching a tipping point in agriculture. This is what the experts analyze, and the experts say that we need to start re-evaluating what, where, and when we use these agricultural chemicals. And what else you and I can do to help native bees and honeybees? What can we do to help them? Well, if you ever see a sign like this, at the side of the road or in a park, 
This is from Kitsilano in Vancouver. Take a moment to read it and respect it. This notes the challenges of bees and reserves an area to restore their habitat. And if you have a garden or even a balcony, plant some bee-friendly flowers. And if you do, please avoid using insecticides as much as you can. There is things that you and I can do to help bees and to help having this apple continue to cost 50 cents. You and I can learn more about what bees and beekeepers do for our food supply. We can get involved in the discussion on how to balance crop protection, the protection of crops against insects and pollinator protection, and even more environmental protection. You and I can support the efforts of beekeepers and researchers to understand the problems and develop solutions to increase bee health. We all can be part of the solution and we all can help to make this apple and many of the nutritious food we eat to continue to be available and affordable to all of us.